Viewer discretion is advised. A large black tentacle can be seen rapidly emerging from below. This tentacle proceeds to wrap around the Nautilus and begins to rapidly drag it down. Hello everybody, I'm the Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Keter Class Object SCP-5007. SCP-5007, as known as Bass Strait, is the collective designation of malicious, partially humanoid entities that maintain a territory across the Bass Strait. This area of the ocean divides Tasmania and the Australian mainland, and it has been known for a string of disappearances within this range. The morphology of 5007 often varies. Universally, 5007 are composed of groups of between two and nine human bodies, fused together amidst large clusters of black tentacles. These tentacles appear to vary in length between approximately 2 and 70 meters. Additionally, they appear fused to the skin where they touch directly. Of note are the stomachs of 5007, which are grossly distorted and swollen to sizes approaching 15 to 20 meters in diameter. Instances are capable of passive flight, attaining buoyancy through enormous quantities of gases produced within their stomachs. Across the surface of these organs, most specimens develop clusters of simple eyes and bioluminescent organs. 5007 are known to abduct human beings. They appear able to navigate all weather with minimal difficulty, regardless of clear or hostile skies. 5007 will move towards the shore, stalking the intended victim for a short time before lowering numerous tentacles and appendages down to the proximity of the subject to physically grab them. Once the victims are securely captured, they will return to the open water at great speed, often in excess of 320 kilometers per hour. Foundation teams successfully interviewed over 120 witnesses and soon discovered that in a vast majority of cases, the abductions were both preceded and followed by reports of lights in the sky. Likewise, there were also more concrete sightings of unidentified flying objects described as looking like balloons. The first successful visual recordings were accomplished in late 1982. It was successfully captured and transported to Site-40 for containment. It was then designated as SCP-5007-S1. After the containment of 5007-S1, it was determined that there must be at least 16 instances of 5007 as yet unaccounted for. One of the reefs located in the central Bass Strait has been proven to be the home and origin of 5007 and has been dubbed SCP-5007-A. There is a large pit in the center of 5007-A measuring 33 meters in diameter and extending to an as yet unknown depth below the surface of the water. This pit has been dubbed SCP-5007-B and unmanned exploration via drones has shown it to have a depth of at least 4,000 meters. Water samples collected from 5007-B contain large quantities of human DNA and an unknown biological compound. Additionally, the presence of a large entity below 5007-B has been suspected for some time. This entity has been designated SCP-5007-C. In order to determine the nature of 5007-C, D-50798 was instructed to dive to the bottom of 5007-B to observe the environment and describe significant depth readings. Below is the footage that was recorded by the cameras that mounted on the exterior of the SCPS Nautilus. All systems are good, I'm ready to submerge. SCPS Nautilus is lowered into 5007-B. Looking good, headed down, Seeing a lot of strange black-yellow vines growing around the walls of the trench, a large 5007 instance comes into view, clinging to a rocky outcropping. All of its eyes follow the SCPS Nautilus, and many of the previously seen tendrils are wrapped around the specimen and inside of its orifices, particularly the mouths and noses of the individuals composing the bulk of the specimen. Is that a plane it's holding on to? Uh, 528 meters down? Another 135 5007 instances are seen at 5,391 meters deep, along with 58 overgrown plane wrecks. At this depth, natural light cannot penetrate through to illuminate what they are seeing. How am I not at the bottom? They said they didn't think it went deeper than 4,000 meters. 
I'm glad those things don't seem interested in me. The SCPS Nautilus passes a badly damaged human arm, which appears to have been crushed. The arm is visibly twitching. Oh my god. Uh, 5,800 meters now, seeing human remains. God, I can't wait to get back up and go home. I wouldn't mind just going back to prison at this point. It feels so wrong down here. The SCPS Nautilus passes into a brine pool and visibility drops. Visibility is even worse down here. 6,000 meters now. I'm not seeing any fish or anything. The SCPS Nautilus enters a large mass of human remains similar to the arm he encountered previously. The remains all appear to have been crushed and drained of. However, the eyes remain intact. D-500798 can be heard hyperventilating as they enter this area. Each individual floating in this area is alive and attempting to move despite the enormous damage to their bodies. All can be seen visibly observing the SCPS Nautilus as it passes them. Oh my god, this can't be possible. How are they moving? At this point, the remains are attempting to grab the SCPS Nautilus and communicate with it. Thumping can be heard inside the submersible as they bump against it. They're saying something. Oh god, they're talking to me. What are they saying? One set of partial remains floats in front of the SCPS Nautilus, looking directly at the camera. Go back. They're saying, go back. Oh no, I can't do this. I can't. I've gone down 6,700 meters. I'm not going any further. SCPS Nautilus's rate of descent is seen to slow, but passes the mass of human remains into clear water again. At this moment, D-500798 can be heard performing calming breathing exercises for 19 minutes. Okay, let's keep going. Currently at 7,208 meters down. A large black tentacle can be seen rapidly emerging from below. It is approximately 8 meters in diameter and features numerous yellow eyes growing on it. This tentacle proceeds to wrap around the Nautilus and begins to rapidly drag it down. D-500798 can be heard panicking and expressing distress during this process. Eight more tentacles can be seen rising towards the Nautilus. Three of these possess large openings on their ends, which proceed to open as they approach the submersible, revealing large clusters of eyes, mouths, and human heads seemingly grafted to the tentacles. A mass of thin tentacles emerge, holding two victims. The tentacles proceed to press the individuals together, causing them to fuse together by unknown means. Both individuals show signs of significant distress. The tentacles proceed to further alter both victims before thin green tentacles enter the frame from above and force themselves into the victim's abdomens, which begin to swell. Suddenly, the entire frame is filled by an enormous eye ringed with tentacles, large claws, and human remains. It is estimated to be at least 650 meters in diameter. D-500798 can be heard screaming for the entire duration of this portion of footage. The Nautilus is rapidly ascending, though the cameras are partially obscured by an unknown substance. D-500798 can be heard babbling and vomiting. The Nautilus breaches the surface. Recovery teams successfully recover the submersible. Upon the recovery of the Nautilus, it was found that the submersible was almost entirely covered in a thick organic coating, with dozens of eyes growing from it. Upon their extrication from the Nautilus, D-500798 immediately attempted to attack Foundation personnel and harm themselves. They showed signs of anomalous physical alteration, namely the growth of numerous eyes over their upper body and arms. On-site security determined that D-500798 was a threat to personnel safety and immediately terminated them with small arms fire. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit.
I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye.